Well, hello there once again, dearest viewers. Wouldn't you know, this video idea came from a comment from one of you lot on our previous Halo-related video. Look, here it is on screen right there. What a legend that guy is, huh? So yeah, keep on posting those comments, and you too may very well be the source of another video, so you'll get called out like this unwitting fellow. Anyway, to the video. So, we've already spoken about what Halo ODST might have looked like had it adopted a more gritty reimagining of the franchise's typical tropes, where the abilities of the playable character would fall more in line with a Call of Duty character, if you will. You could lead a squad of Marines, Republic Commando style, and move through each level, strategically dealing with each Covenant threat you come across in a more lore-accurate manner, so to speak. And by lore-accurate, we mean the Covenant would feel a little more like this. <laughs> In this video, however, we're going a step further, stripping back those power fantasy elements even more. One of the core and- oh my god, I can't do this set. <laughs> oh f it's late in the day, man. In this video, however, we're going a step further, stripping back those power fantasy elements even more, one of the core aspects of the franchise's mainline entries, to see how Halo might hold up as a full-blown survival horror game. Now, to me, the Halo franchise already has a lot of the groundwork covered here, and there's several approaches one might explore when attempting a reimagining such as this. On the one side, you have the Covenant. Sure, we're pretty used to dealing with hordes and hordes of them as a shielded, armoured, genetically modified Spartan, but what if you had to face an elite as, say, a civilian? Jackals look pretty scary, I mean, look at those teeth, ugh. Hell, I'd think twice about crossing a grunt and all if it was the only one holding a gun. Then, on the other side, we have the Flood. Like I said, a lot of the work is already done for us here. The Flood, in case you're somehow unaware, are basically parasitical space zombies hell-bent on consuming all organic life within the galaxy in an attempt to satisfy their unending hunger. Much like me, a uh, Chinese buffet, actually. There's an existential, almost Lovecraftian element of horror to this particular extraterrestrial threat, and, well, they burrow into you, eat your flesh, and turn you into whatever the flying f this ungodly monstrosity is, so yeah. Like I said, the horror here kind of speaks for itself. But before I get too carried away with all of that, let's go back and start with the Covenant first. You're a civilian, not a Spartan, and unlike a Spartan, you don't have the seemingly omniscient intelligence of the UNSC to keep you informed as to what to expect, reassure you as to what's going on, or reinforce you when things get tough. This lack of a safety net would really begin to create a feeling of isolation and vulnerability. Perhaps you live in a city a little like New Mombasa, or a smaller colonial town like we see in Reach. Wherever it is, unbeknownst to you and, hell, why not up the stakes, your family, it's about to be the first target of a planet-wide Covenant attack. From here, the inciting incident kicks off and escalates very quickly as the Covenant invades, killing, blowing up and burning everything you know and love. Look, I'm no fan of Paramount's Halo series, I mean, I am really... I'm not... a fan. But one thing I felt they sort of got right near the start was the brutality of what a Covenant invasion might actually be like for a civilian population. I mean, these guys just get absolutely decimated. There's blood and gore and limbs flying off and they're just getting completely f***. Sure, it felt a little much for Halo, which has always been a bit more reserved in its depiction of blood and gore, but it would fit very well into a survival horror game where you need to establish the threat as a brutal, unstoppable killing machine to be feared and avoided at all costs. So how would the Covenant behave in this Halo horror title? They can't seem too militarised, just running out and shooting people down, as we've seen that before all too often. But I think there's a lot of room here to bring certain horror archetypes to each of the races we've become so familiar with. The Elites, for instance, could act like predators, cloaking and stealthing their way around the environment, coming up behind you and suddenly cutting you in two, making for a nice and, not necessarily cheap, jump scare moment that's woven into the gameplay. The Brutes I picture more as Big Daddies. That's a... Bioshock enemy, in case you weren't aware, not some weird repressed fancy of mine. Constantly angry and charging through environments, a bit like those berserkers from Gears of War, but without the hindrance of being blind. Halo Infinite already played with an idea like this, and Halo 2 also saw the Brutes go into a rage mode, so here we're just taking that and dialing up the brutality. God, I am hilarious. Do you get it? Brute brutality? It's just... it's comic gold. Sorry. Now, the Jackals would have to be quite different. We've seen glimpses of them appearing more ravenous here and there, like that one Halo 2 cutscene, but the only horrific thing about them in the games otherwise is their ridiculous pinpoint accuracy with snipers. I mean, look at this Anyway, in this hypothetical game, I'd lean into that rabid characteristic and have the Jackals feel more like animals, hunting down humans and devouring them, because why not? It's scary. <laughs> 
In my head, I'm already picturing scenarios like that one kitchen scene in Jurassic Park, or where they're moving through the tall grass. They'd behave more similarly to those stalkers in Crisis 3 or those pack hunters in Dead Space 2, working together to find you and more you to death. You can even introduce drones who might behave a little similarly, but they can fly now. Oh, they fly now! They fly now! I mean, look at this poor sod getting carried away. And lastly, we have the grunts. These guys are a little harder to make scary given their humorous nature within the games, but I think you could lead into their more sadistic humour. Perhaps they enjoy mocking and torturing the humans that their comrades have already mutilated. I'd see them more as walking alarms, where they start screaming and shouting and pointing out your location to the more powerful enemies as soon as they spot you. The tension therefore coming from trying not to be seen by them, as opposed to having to face them in a fight. We don't have to remove their humour entirely here, as you always need a little levity and comic relief, even in horror games. He was my best friend! So what about you? What about the gameplay or the environment? Well, there's a lot of possibilities here. My preference would be to lean into the survival aspect of survival horror, scavenging a ruined city, littered with the dead, and these more monstrous versions of Covenant squads to avoid. I'd still opt for a more linear level based approach, so events and encounters can feel a little more scripted and not up to the random chance involved in more open world models. More Bioshock Infinite than Dying Light, shall we say. Levels are large with plenty of hidden routes and resources, but there's always only one or two objectives you need to aim for at any one time. Here I think you could definitely play with the deterioration of the environment as the game progresses. The world starts out normal enough of course, but once the attack happens we start to see more destruction, building with holes in the walls, smoke rising in the distance, blood and rubble all starting to spatter the corridors, and as you continue and the Covenant assault escalates, we see less and less human survivors and more and more ships looming in the skies, blocking out the sun and casting this unmoving shadow over your home. The air is thick with smoke and dust, perhaps they've started glassing some of the bigger cities in the distance. Picture some of the city environments in Fear 2 and you start to get the idea. Gameplay would focus on stealth and ensuring you're stocked up with enough health items to survive any unfortunate encounters. You might find some small temporary means to defend yourselves, knives and stun battens for instance, perhaps they allow you to take out grunts and jackals, but it's basically impossible for you to penetrate an elite's shields, so they end up feeling more like a xenomorph from Alien Isolation, where you just have to evade them. Honestly, Alien Isolation is a pretty good comparison for what the tone and feel of this game could be. You are literally a survivor of an unknown alien threat, searching for whatever means of escape you can. Maybe you find a battered up warthog somewhere, or a rusty pistol or shotgun, with just a few rounds left. You're not military trained, so reloading is slow and your aim is unreliable, but it could offer a few moments of catharsis where you're finally able to take out maybe just a few enemies, perhaps one particularly bloodthirsty brute that's been coming after you for a whole level. You'd need to choose your shots carefully, knowing ammo is scarce, making the weapons just another tool for survival, as opposed to turning you into a killing machine like what can kind of happen towards the tail end of some of the Resident Evil titles. Perhaps in order to give the narrative an overarching goal, and up the stakes, link it to the rest of the franchise, you're the only hope of getting a warning out there to the rest of the colonies or to the UNSC. You need to make your way through the war-torn city in order to activate a distress signal and call the cavalry. In this way you bring in a sense of that galactic scale the franchise is known for, whilst still keeping the immediate gameplay personal and intimate. Your goal is clear, but you have to survive. You're the colony's only hope, and all that good stuff. I could go on and on throwing out hypothetical ideas for this game, but now let's move on to scenario number two, the one that I know many of you out there have already been discussing for quite some time now, myself included. That is of course a Halo horror game centred around dealing with the Flood, as a lowly little marine. Look at this poor little guy. What a chump. Now, you could of course take a very similar approach to the first scenario we've discussed here, and there are many elements from that scenario that I'd still like to include for this one, but for the sake of the video, let's add some variety and talk through some other ideas. For me, this game would essentially be a Halo-style version of the Aliens movie. Yes, I like the Aliens franchise, alright. You and a squad of Marines are tasked with investigating an unknown threat, which ends up being the Flood, picking off and turning your squad one by one until you're the sole survivor. In this instance, I see the gameplay being a lot more claustrophobic, with tight corridors, perhaps on a UNSC or Covenant ship, or within an old Forerunner structure, dimly lit and gradually succumbing to the cancerous biological mass that is the Flood. You could play with the lighting and sound design a lot here, mounted flashlights revealing blood-soaked walls and floors, whilst distant creaks and thuds echo throughout the ship, Dead Space style, making it unclear if it's just the inner workings of the ship making the noises, or something else. The Flood themselves are, of course, already perfect for a horror game. You wouldn't need to change much about them, save for making some of their mechanics a little more complex to suit a more grounded stealth-based game. 
you'd probably also need to add in a few more infection forms or parasite types or whatever they're called, just to keep the gameplay fresh as you progress through each area. This iteration could be more Bioshock 1 than Bioshock Infinite, in that you're having to search around and find ways to unlock new parts of the ship or structure in order to make progress. There's plenty of horror games out there already that use this type of level and map design to great effect. Perhaps for a time, the Marines set up a safer base of operations, acting as a hub for you to return to as you gradually acquire the things you need for your mission, whatever that may be. Inevitably, of course, this will get overrun in the end. This is a horror game, after all, where the stakes have to constantly rise. Something I would absolutely love to see would be a reimagining of the Guilty Spark level from Halo 1, but instead of playing as the Master Chief, you're one of the Marines. Maybe good old Jenkins. Damn it, Jenkins! Fire your weapon! That goes in beforehand with Sergeant Johnson, which, of course, would be another excuse to bring that legend back too. Oh, I know what the ladies like. You'd have to increase the size of the map, add some new areas, and find a way to show that some of the Marines and Jenkins survived the initial flood encounter, perhaps before fleeing and taking refuge elsewhere, but I have no doubt that fans would totally eat this up. I know I would. Nom 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 nom. Eating it up. The damp, foggy alien jungle and the mysterious, claustrophobic corridors of the Forerunner structure make for a perfect horror setting already, which is no surprise because that was exactly what the original developers were going for at the time. I mean, just look at the way they introduced the Flood, it's a horror game waiting to happen. Taking cues from our ODST video, you would naturally have to be a weaker, more vulnerable FPS character. You can still fight, I don't think constantly having to stealth your way around the Flood would be as fun or intimidating as having to engage them head-on, but you're always at a disadvantage with limited ammo and health supplies. Again, think Dead Space or even Dying Light. The enemies are still scary in both their design and the way they can overwhelm you, but you have the means to take them out if you're careful and manage your resources efficiently. There is of course plenty of room for some nice body horror here too, seeing your comrades gradually fall and turn into these rotting monsters. Some of the imagery from The Thing comes to mind. Again, I could talk through the whole game here, but this video would literally be hours and hours long, so instead I'll start to wrap things up and perhaps we can bounce some more ideas around down in the comment section. Nudge nudge wink wink. I think on some level we can all agree that the Halo franchise could do with a refresh, with a little more variety. Rather than spending millions of dollars on lacklustre, misguided TV shows, say, why not take a more calculated risk and give some money to a smaller developer team with some bright new ideas, someone that can reinvigorate the franchise and look at it with fresh eyes. Halo is big enough that it could span a variety of gaming genres with relative ease, and I don't know why they haven't done this already, given the reasonable success of Halo Wars and Halo Wars 2. If the execs would take a few more risks and think a little bigger, I genuinely think it would pay off now more than ever, when your fanbase is clearly craving something new. I'm sure even Halo fans, who aren't necessarily horror fans, would still give the game a go, and likewise, you'd get horror fans who aren't necessarily Halo fans moving across to check things out as well. So, to conclude, it's starting to sound like a school essay now, isn't it? I think it's pretty clear to me, and a lot of other Halo fans out there, that there are almost endless opportunities when it comes to the potential that the Halo franchise possesses. The horror genre is simply one of several possible avenues that could be approached, and if I, being the small-minded idiot that I am, can come up with a few interesting ideas off the top of my head, I have no doubt there are plenty of developers out there just itching to give something like this a shot. Yes, I'm not a game developer. Yes, making games is extremely hard, much harder than many of us could ever hope to realise. But ultimately, this is Halo. It's supposed to be Microsoft's flagship title. They're literally spending billions buying out Activision right now, and pretty soon they'll own Call of Duty, so the money and resources must be there, you know? Why not take a couple of risks and make even more money? I have to say, it sounds like a win-win to me. So, I think that about wraps up the video. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any extra thoughts on this whole thing, or some completely new ideas, then feel free to leave it down in the comments below, start a discussion, maybe leave a like, subscribe, all that fun YouTube crap. I know a lot of you guys out there obviously enjoy their Halo content, our most popular video right now is our last Halo video, so we're going to keep talking about Halo, but we're not going to force it, we're going to talk about you know various games, maybe even a few TV shows, or movies now and again, so there'll be plenty of different content coming up here, but we'll make sure that we keep Halo within our production schedule. Anyway, thanks again so much for watching, and we will catch you in the next one.